for Objective 3. If you look at Objective 3, it states here, apply a range of teaching strategies to develop critical and creative thinking as well as other higher order thinking skills. That for Indicator 3, we have to master this because for the next four grading periods, we, we need to apply a Classroom Observable Indicator 3. Okay, so to help us really understand this, let's uh, try to go straight first to the clarifications. So how would you define critical thinking skills? Well, these are high-level thinking skills such as analysis, evaluation, interpretation, or synthesis of information and application of creative thought, form an argument, solve a problem, or reach a conclusion. So take note of the three things, no, the three possible outputs. Now, these are cognitive processes, okay? And they belong to the higher order thinking. So again, we will revisit what it means to go for higher thinking. No? So let's look at this illustration of higher order thinking. Now, to look at the, uh, the evolution of this uh, idea, you know, this concept, this actually started under um, the concept of Bloom's taxonomy. And it was later on uh, changed. No? It was revised by Cratwell and Anderson, basically exchanging create and evaluate and changing it into a verb form okay so this talks about how our learners think and how we should think no in in a deeper way first is uh, the the most basic is really to be able to remember facts no you can remember and recall facts if you at the same time understand what you remembered then you'll be able to understand no? so that is the next higher level so we want our learners to not just remember we want them to be able to also understand what these facts mean okay but there is still a higher level for that now once you understand the things or once you understand how things mean it will allow you to apply these facts and rules and concepts to a completely different situation from what you have right now and in that level no, we already have what you call apply. No, so if our learners will be able to recall that fact and be able to understand what they have recalled, and once they will be able to apply it in a completely different situation, then you are already uh, in a third level of cognitive process called apply. Now, uh, once application is done, no, we we also allow our learners to go beyond that. Let's understand how things work. No, in reality. In this case, this is very unidimensional still. No? We want our learners to recall a fact. We want them to understand that and to apply it in a different situation. But let's also understand no, this is reality. Things are not unidimensional. What I'm trying to say is that things don't actually go in one direction. A concept, for instance, has a lot of intricacies into it. Okay, So if you combine all these uh, facts together, no, for a certain system, for instance, like for in, for instance, a car, a car for uh, in that example is comprised of a lot of parts. No, we have the carburetor, we have the have the wheels. No, so all these parts interact together to allow that uh, the person to be able to be transported to one place to another. But it is a an interaction of different systems and processes that combine together to be able to work as one. No? So, uh, in reality, no, we want our learners to be able to understand how these complexities work, how each of the parts work together in order to form that particular system. And once the learners will be able to understand how those parts work against each other, what the function, what the function of each part is, then you are already analyzing. Okay, the ability to analyze is very important. That helps you. It's, it's the mere understanding of how each part and how each of uh, a particular part of a system works together to form that particular system. Basically, you now if you look at it, analysis is a combination of application, understanding, and remembering. No, you cannot analyze if you haven't applied it, you haven't understood the, the concepts, and you haven't remember. Uh, you can't remember it. So this is analysis. Once you'll be able to analyze and or to understand how each of the part part uh, works, that will help you evaluate. No, so a very simple example for this: uh, if a mechanic will be asked, no, if you if you're going to uh, tell the mechanic all the observations you had about your car, for instance, you will say. The car won't work, and then the mechanic will say, "What did you observe?" No, so he will say, uh, the moment I turn on the ignition, 
it just merely turns on but it doesn't continue working no it suddenly turns off no so the the car mechanic having the ability to understand already the parts now and how they interact against each other will now be able to evaluate clearly what is the problem so he, he will say know the problem the problem there is that your carburetor is not working so by just merely giving you the facts by, by just merely allowing you to uh, to state all the the things that you have observed in your car that will give you the ability to create judgment you know the ability to judge things now we want our learners to be able to do that now uh, we've seen examples in multiple choice questions wherein we let our learners choose among all these things now which one is the better choice this is a form of higher order thinking question okay we want our learners to be able to evaluate what is the best course of action now this is more of a decision making phase okay being able to make the best decision out from knowing how each of the different uh, parts in a system works everything in our lives you no know, is a form of a system complexity of all these processes interacting against each other is a form of system now we want our learners to be able to understand how the parts work uh, how they actually apply in a completely different situation and then uh, also be able to understand you no know, how uh, these uh, concepts these little processes these little concepts uh, work that's evaluating but is there a higher order level thinking for evaluating of course there is no and that is the highest once you are capable of evaluating no and you continuously evaluate and weigh on different parts of the processes and systems in whatever uh, body of knowledge you have now you'll be able to create something out from it so i hope you realize that this is the highest uh, level uh, you'll be able to create something beautiful out from it because you've continuously evaluated now this aspect the best option is this of this aspect the best option is this and the best aspect is uh, the best aspect of this uh, particular process is this and then you combine them together because of continuous evaluation you'll be able to create something invent something there is an inventive step now let me ask you is writing a form of creating of course you're creating a creative work that is a form of creation okay but the thing is the quality of your evaluation your analysis your application your understanding and your ability to remember the facts is very dependent upon the quality of what you have created that's why this is the highest level creation okay and we want our learners to become creative people you now the, the ability to create uh, things is the most important thing that we want our learners to develop because uh, in the 21st century, we wanted our learners to be able to create something, innovate, no, and improve how we do things. Okay, so basically, this concept is what is embodied in Objective Three. Okay, we want our learners to be able to uh, go for higher order thinking. So, what is higher order thinking in the in the context of the RPMS PPST? It starts with analysis. Okay, so here we start with analysis. So, as you can see, there are three there. Now, first is just to remember, to understand, and then to apply it in a completely different situation. This this is still lower order thinking, no, in the context of uh, the RPMS PPST. So when does uh, higher order thinking start? It starts with analysis. Let's look at how this higher cognitive process you know, works together. Now, what is the end point? The end point here is that our learner should be able to create thought. No, to form an argument. Another thing is solve a problem or reach a conclusion. Okay, so let's look at creative thinking skills. Thinking skills that involve exploring ideas, generating possibilities, and looking for multiple right answers rather than just one. So uh, let's uh, emphasize the word multiple right answers. There are many teachers. I, I hope you have observed. No, Usually we want our learners to be able to generate ideas but usually as a teacher you already have your own bias the problem with some of the teachers they tend to stick with their own definition they tend to uh, seek for one way to solve a problem but honestly we gone are the days wherein we are the major source of information so we want our learners to be able to find their own way of answering the questions so we have to help them explore ideas, generate possibilities, and look for multiple right answers 
rather than just one. Okay, that's the definition of creative thinking skills. The ability to allow the learners to solve the problem on their own way. And I tell you, there are many ways to kill the cat. No? Many ways to solve the problem more than you could ever imagine. So a teacher will be able to create that environment where in learning or solving a problem in a multiple or different ways to do it is uh, the best option. Okay? So do not, as a teacher, we, we don't want to impose a particular solution to a problem. We are there to guide them, find that solution. It's uh, <laughs> it's really quite hard to do, but you know the aspirations here are very very good, no? Because this is just how things work in higher uh, levels, higher order thinking. Okay, but uh, I've seen honestly, I've seen uh, teachers sometimes blunder uh, the idea of higher order thinking. Okay, uh, usually we just well, most of our questions in the examinations are purely recall, no? purely recall, uh, sometimes very hard sometimes to let our uh, teachers create uh, questions on understanding or even application. But still, when you look at it, at the level of understanding and uh, understanding and application, that is still in lower order thinking. What is higher order thinking, No, high level thinking skills as defined by RPMS PPST is in the context of analysis evaluation and um, you know the ability to create or synthesize knowledge or creation okay so what about higher order thinking skills complex thinking processes which include analysis evaluation uh, see it all starts with analysis evaluation synthesis reflection and creativity okay so basically these are what is considered as higher order thinking and they have added synthesis and reflection. Okay? But basically, these are under evaluation. Now, if you look at Cratwell and Anderson, uh, there were many revisions. Okay? But the ability to combine them together, because sometimes it's very hard to create an invention if there's an inventive step involved, uh, it's very hard. So usually, we just consolidate our learning in a form of synthesis in a written work or by stating how we generalize things based on our observation. It's still a combination, a form of creativity. And out from that, you'll be able to reflect, ah, how should I do it? No, Should I, uh, you know, con continuously reflect? Reflection is a very important step because it allows our learners to, to think about uh, how they are currently learning. At the same time, you know, look at their own biases as to the subject matter and then improve, you no. Know? Continuously improve the way they do things. Now, so reflection is a very important thing. And then out from that, we'll be able to create something. Okay, so this is what is how higher order thinking skills is defined. Now, let's look at the rubrics. Now, how does it, this apply? And when are you going to rate the teacher? Three, four, five, six, seven. And you as a teacher, how would you prepare you not know, to get seven? Okay, so... In number three, the teacher provides straightforward questions and activities that are which lead learners to a single path of inquiry. So what makes it different? It's only a single path of inquiry. Now, what are the features of practice? You know, again, I would like to restate this. Um, the features of practice are very much you know, mutually exclusively defines how each of the rubrics works you know, or defines when you should grade three four, five, six, seven. So in three, the teacher asks questions that require role type responses, which are who, what, where, and when. So in level three, you know, the lowest level, we ask uh, we we observe that our teachers are really asking questions. You no, know? they're already asking questions in this case. But the questions are always who, what, you no know? Sa ang kontinente matatagpuan ng bansang Indonesia, sa ang kaugnayin lokasyon na matatagpuan ng Indonesia. So, we as teachers, we should not uh, confine ourselves with these row type questions. No, these row type questions are merely recall of facts. No, and then in number two, another uh, practice here is that the teacher accepts all contributions without processing the learner's answers. Now, a very important skill as a teacher is the ability to do Socratic method. No, so, what is Socratic method? 
No, uh, let's just give you a little background of Socrates. Socrates is a teacher who doesn't really give you know, the exact answers to your questions. Instead, you know, if a learner or his student or disciple will ask him, he usually asks more questions. You know? He doesn't give the answer. So, for instance, if the student will ask, uh, "Why do you think the uh, do you think that the that the Earth is flat?" Of course, Socrates, Socrates will not say the answer. He will say, um, "What have you observed? You no, know, when you uh, rode a ship, you no, know, did you notice or did you fell down to the other side? You know, what do you think? Oh, is the is the world flat? You no. Know? So instead of instead of giving the the answers to the questions, Socrates tends to ask more questions. If they can find with him a problem." Socrates will ask more questions. No. He will say, "Why do you think? No, why do you think you had this problem right now? What started it all? Uh, what caused this problem to be what it is right now?" Okay, and then you will give your answers. Of course, what do you think is the best solution to this question, to this uh, problem that you have right now? So all these questions uh, actually is leading towards the key concept or the realization you want your Uh, learners to really uh, realize and learn from your uh, discussion. It's a, it's a series of questions you want your learners to know. Uh, this is also very famous, uh, very usually used in courts where uh, the, the lawyer will ask questions and then later on uh, let the witness no, admit the facts okay, of the case. So basically, Uh, a teacher should be like that also. This is a very important skill that we need to have. The ability to process the information given. Uh, the way we ask questions should be based on the answers of the learners. Okay, But what is level four? The teacher uses questions and activities that mostly require the learners to interpret, explain, or describe ideas learned. So in this higher level, the teacher already uses questions and uh, mostly... Uh, this requires the learners to interpret, explain, or describe ideas learned. So here, the teacher makes some attempt to engage learners in genuine discussion rather than simple, factual, or rote-type discussion. So, parang Socrates na talaga. No? The teacher asks, can you please explain this idea? Okay, so uh, you are now engaging the learners and trying to let the learners really um, explain the idea fully. Okay, so uh, let's remember that's still level four. No? But if you go higher, in level five, the teacher employs a range of targeted follow-up questions and activities that encourage learners to explain, demonstrate, and use ideas learned. So this time, no, in level five, the teacher employs a range of strategies to ensure the most, that most learners are given opportunities to give opinions about lesson and to react Uh, to the opinions of others. So what does this mean? Okay, what we wanted to do here is that there is already a an employment of a range of strategies. Okay? This is not only a learning opportunity to some of the learners, no, but most of the learners so that they will be able to give their opinions about the lesson and react to the opinions of others. So Uh, number five pa lang, no? what do you think is the future practice here? There is a necessity for the learners to group together. No? So as you can see uh, from objective one to three, it's very important that group dynamics is involved in the teaching and learning process. Okay, because, no, simply because in inquiry-based learning and in cooperative learning strategies, we want our learners to be involved. The teacher here creates a genuine discussion among learners and providing adequate time for them to respond as well as to step aside when appropriate. So here, you know, in number five, pa lang, uh, we are expecting uh, the teacher to be able to know when to step in and step out because uh, the teacher will be listening in the side uh, sidelines and trying to see how this interaction is going and then guide them if necessary. Okay, so again, this is a range of targeted follow-up questions. No, five palang no heavy na to, no, because this is already what is expected in a cooperative learning environment. 
Okay? Or in an inquiry-based learning environment. So in number six, what, what could be higher than this? No? The teacher now challenges learners to justify their thinking. So this now, uh, you know, if you observe that the teacher knows how to step in and step out in the conversation among the learners, in the groupings, that's five. But if you notice that the teacher is capable of allowing the learners to justify their thinking, really going to the kill, going for the kill, and being able to successfully engage the learners in a discussion, no, there is already a very interactive uh, discussion directed towards the key concept that you want the learners to realize. So here, the teacher challenges the learners cognitively. No? So I, we have discussed comprehensively the the higher order thinking skills. No, these are cognitive process. So just imagine cognitive process is a deeper way of thinking on things. But here in six, what is uh, evident and there is a clear manifestation that the teacher uh, is capable of uh, challenging the learners cognitively. It's to an, an to an advance high level thinking and discourse in an interactive exchange of views. So there is a form of debate. No, there is a form of interaction among them. Uh, this usually happens. No, if we are going to look at the four A's, this usually is manifested in the analysis part, wherein we allow the learners to really form that particular key concept on their own through the art of questioning. So the ability to derive a key concept is a very important skill for a teacher. A teacher should be able to do this. No? The teacher ensures that all voices of learners are heard in the discussion. So here, no, the teacher uh, allows all our learners to be heard in the discussion. Okay, so this is the manifestation or what is manifested in level 6. No? So, grabe na kayo ang interaction at this level. So we want our learners to be very interactive, employing higher order thinking, being very reflective, uh, doing the cognitive process of analysis and evaluation of the facts. Um, you know, being able to do this is already level six. But what could be higher than this? No, being distinguished already seven. So here, the teacher provides a broad range of questions and activities, including those of higher order thinking to challenge learners to analyze their thinking and promote deeper understanding. So, see, there is already an application of broad range of questions and activities. So, what does this mean? Uh, here, again, now, time and time again, we see that in level 7, the ability of the teacher to really consider the differences of the learners is the, the most important thing. No, We want our teachers to be able to look at the individual differences of the learners and adjust how to teach the lesson. So this is where the broad range of questions and activities comes in. Do you have uh, possible options of activities you know, in your mind that will allow you to deal with this particular type of learners? What if, as you go ahead, you know, when you ask questions, you notice that the learners will never realize the key concept. So do you have a plan B? Do you have a plan C? Because uh, considering this, how are you going to adjust uh, more activities and more uh, techniques in, in allowing the learners to derive the key concept on their own? For level 7 is the ability to adjust uh, and to find ways to help the learners realize things. So here, the learn teacher gives learners opportunities to compare and contrast ideas. And the teacher gives learners opportunities to synthesize or summarize information within and across discipline. Here, we are already allowing our learners to solidify their learning, not just merely not just merely compare, no, uh, just allowing them to be heard. Okay, This time, we want them to synthesize what they have learned, summarize what they have learned, and this cut across all discipline. So here, no, as we can see, we see the evolution from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, 3 is more on unidimensional approach, only knowledge base for be able to interpret on their own, give them the opportunity. It's 4. For 5, no, the ability to now know when to get in and get out in the conversation among the learners in order to guide them. 6, no, you'll be able to engage them, allow them to be heard, okay? And then you know, do interactive exchange of ideas. And in 7, find ways to really solidify and synthesize what they have learned. 
allow them to compare and contrast ideas. But this time, you also have you know, a broad range of ability or questions and activities that you want them to learn. So I think that's all for objective three. It's quite uh, heavy, no? But remember, objective one, two, and three are to be mastered, no? From first grading to fourth grading, okay? Because this cuts across all disciplines. I mean, all these objectives cut uh, cuts across discipline. But if you notice, objective one to three are the most important things. No, objective one deals with the way we integrate. Objective two deals with literacy and numeracy. No, and objective three this time. Uh, looks at how you employ higher higher order thinking skills. Now ensure that creativity and critical thinking is evident among your learners. Okay, so that's all for objective one to three. Uh, this is part three, and uh, if you learn something from this, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in our next video.